Creators of a Different Beat, presented by Changing Lanes, the official podcast of BMW. My name is Jonathan, co-host of the Changing Lanes podcast, and today we've got something super awesome for you guys. Now, this is a live format where we speak with people that have unique ideas, bring passion to the table, and change their field. Real creators that share our optimism for the future. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is this creator stuff that we're talking about? Well, creators have a different beat for us is a call to all pioneers to inspire others. And since we all have a little bit more time on our hands at the moment than we'd like, we thought it would be a great idea to start conversations with them to inspire you watching in and listening in from home. So on today's episode, we have singer-songwriter Tim Shu with us. Thank you so much for joining us, Tim. Thank you for having me. <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit more about yourself to get everyone up to speed? Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm a currently I'm a singer songwriter, and I've been um, I've been writing songs since I was like 15 years old. Um, and I'm from Denmark. I grew up in the countryside of uh, Copenhagen, one hour from Copenhagen. Wow. And uh, the past six years, I've just been kind of living this kind of different life. That's very put. Um, <laughs> dive right into your your different life but before we dive into that um for the people watching in please send us in your questions that you'd like to ask tim and we will ask him a selection of the questions that come in at the end of this live stream plus we've asked on our facebook page in advance for themes and ideas for tim to write a song about and he'll share that he'll share that uh, halfway through the the interview today so uh get yeah, ready let's see let's see how that goes <laughs> exactly exactly so tim uh Let's dive on in. What were your early years like? Um, did you always have the pull towards music or did music find you? Um, I actually, I think music actually found me. I, um, I was a very sort of, I mean, I wouldn't use the, I would never use the word normal about me, but, <laughs> but I was kind of a, a normal kid playing soccer, you know, um, and then something just happened as I got older. And um, I mean, I've always been singing and all that kind of stuff, but I've, I've been kind of normal in the way of, you know, fitting into the, the, the group of, of boys in school and playing soccer and all those things. Um, and then around like 15 years old, um, I watched a, a live music DVD. That was back in the days when we had DVDs <laughs> um, with, uh, with John Mayer. And it completely just changed my whole outlook to, I guess, life, actually. Wow. It gave me this, like, idea of, like, wait, like, you can actually create your own world with your own set of rules and your own stories. Um, and, and that's when it all just sort of shifted for me. And I, I actually called my mom at that time, and I, and I told her, hey, mom, I don't want to be... Like, I don't want to go to school anymore. I don't want to have any education. I just want to be a rock star. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, that's when everything changed. And that, that's when I really started going toward that goal, that goal. So at 15, you have this rock star dream. And I'm yeah. sure you're not the only kid that at 15, you're like, hey, mom, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit school to become a rock star. But you, you actually, like, became a rock star, right? So yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I've definitely uh, seen seen glimpses of, glimpses of it and toured the world and and played like huge arena shows and all these things. And um, I guess how it happened was, I mean, if 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 there's any aspiring musicians and artists out there who wants to go for it, my advice would just be like, play for as many people as possible and as many different people as possible, especially like any amateur uh contests competitions you can you can get in front of because because that advice you get from like professional um players in the game um that's that's worth a lot uh and that's what i kind of did until i started just winning a bunch of different shows and it led to like many many things and it led to tv and it led to a lot of things that then brought me on um on the sort of the broadway stage I then turned into sort of like playing um, theater plays and musicals and all that kind of stuff. And um, and I guess for me, that's that's also been a part of my dream. I wanted to actually be an actor when I started out as a kid, um, but it kind of took 
some I, I would I wouldn't I wouldn't call it a wrong turn, but at some point I just I guess at the age of twenty seven actually I stopped and I looked at myself and I was like, wait a minute, I'm doing like all these things I'm playing. I had like lead roles in the musical Hair. I played I played Flounder in The Little Mermaid uh, on the on like the Danish Broadway kind of thing here in Copenhagen, yeah. and and it was. I mean, it was a fun time, and it was definitely like for me, a, like a, okay, done that, did that. Yeah. That was a, a bit of a dream come true. Uh, very fortunate in that matter. Um, but all of a sudden, it became more about being sort of, because I also did like a, like a bunch of. I remember a bunch of television shows that didn't really have to do with my music or with with being creative. It it had it more had to do with like uh, cooking cooking steaks and like you know those like you know, reality shows or whatever it is. <clears throat> and, and obviously that's, that's good money. That's really good money. Um, and then at the age of 27, I just stopped and, and I looked at myself, I was like, what, what road am I, what path am I following right now? Am I following that 15 year old kid who saw that live DVD and had his life changed? Yeah. Or am I following this path where I'm making a lot of money. I have my own apartment. I have the TV. I have the all those things that I'm sort of um, hypnotized into believing yeah. um, from society and from whatever whatever it is from the day we're born. Um, and I actually gave myself, I think, the first and only uh, New Year's resolution ever. Um, and it was stop saying yes to gigs and to jobs and to offers, television offers or whatever, if, if, if just for the money, if it's just for the money and if it's just for, you know, if it doesn't have to do with your music, you're gonna start saying no to everything. Yeah. So I started doing that. And with that obviously came zero money. <laughs> um, because like this business as a musician and as a songwriter, it's just, it's the hardest game, like I think. Yeah. in the in the world maybe possibly um and uh and yeah and then i just became so light my whole body and everything actually the less money i started making the better i felt and the the bigger i felt and the it was just a huge relief relief and uh i sold my apartment and because that was like the only thing that sort of like held me back from actually pursuing what i really wanted mm. um and now I'm here, and I've been cop surfing for like six or seven years now, and it's uh, it's been a crazy fucking ride. <laughs> wow. Okay. So so you've just given us like so much information. I want to bring yeah. because I know that there's a lot of people that they have that that initial dream, like you at 15 years old, mom, I'm going to be a rock star, right? Yeah. And they do everything, tooth and nail, to get what they want. And maybe they do, you know, they win those competitions, like you said, like try it out, win these competitions, start to get get things rolling. Uh, you you got to not only create your own music, but also perform in musicals like like uh, Ariel and um, and Hair, which you know, coming coming from from that that background, you know, you you have people would think you've made it, you know, you're on stage performing eight shows a week, you're yeah. doing these big name shows. Yeah. But it's within. It's somebody else's music. It's somebody else's costumes. It's somebody else's lighting. It's it. You're you're. Yes, you are standing on stage and doing your thing, but yeah. you don't have complete control over the, over the experience of what the yeah. what the audience is having. And yes, it's big and it's 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 wonderful and it, it ticks all the boxes that a lot of people dream of. But yeah. if you have something inside of you that's like, I want to make my own thing. That's a different tune to a lot of people that are like, I want to be on stage or I want to be on TV. You know, I see, I see all of these um, reality TV shows about, you know, uh, the cooking show, like all these, these, these celebrities on cooking shows or all these celebrities, you know, locked in a house, Big Brother style, you know, or, or whatever yeah. it is. And it's, it's entertaining, but as in the sense of like lighthearted fun, oh, just something in the background. But I think yeah. there's something more to you than just settling for being something in the background. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, 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 for me, it's, it's the purpose of why we're here. And that's why I, I stopped and, and had that look at myself. 
uh, because I could have, like, like you said, I could have easily just pushed that green button and, and, and been like, let's go, let me be the, you know, whatever, the, whatever I could have made myself into at that point of, of my time and in my career. And, and I think like there, there are many versions of, of that dream that I had as a 15 year old kid, mm. but I think there's only like one really true, um, version of that dream if you really listen to your heart and for me it's just been like undeniable it's been undeniable and it's um and once i really set 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 myself free to actually go 100 percent for what i really wanted it's it's just been elevating for me so much my whole songwriting skills like my my network which actually is the most beautiful thing that came out of of this way of living was was the network i got in in the world um from from traveling to a lot of different countries around the world and and now it's just like I have like families you know like plotted out in in the world which is a really really cool and sort of connected feeling and um yeah so I think it's just really important to stop sometimes and be like hey am I just doing this because because like this is what I this is just the flow I'm in and I'm just naturally going to keep on doing this because that's just randomly what I, what I, you know, started doing or, um, cause it's funny cause, cause it would have been easier for me to just be like, yeah, let me do more roles. Let me play more things. Let me, let me cook a steak. Cause I'm actually really bad at it. and I want to be better or like, you know, like these, these things or, or yeah, I don't know. I, my brain is super scattered too about these things. And like you say, it's a lot of information, um, and that's, that's how my brain is like, that's how I'm thinking about this situation too. It's a lot of information, but for me, it's still like, there's a thread of consistency uh-huh. in just like going full on for this thing, even though it looks like, pfft, yeah, what the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> so j- just to like wrap my head around this and, and the, and the, the watchers at yeah. home, listeners at home. You sold and my, and my head too, and my head too. I want to wrap my head around it too. <laughs> so you would think, you know, you have an apartment that you own, you have, you know, you have everything that, that on paper, it looks great. And, yeah. um, and it's ticking all the boxes, but you're like, no, I'm going to sell the apartment. I'm going to pack my bag. I'm going to reject the safe and secure to build your own world with your songs and your stories on your own terms. And it sounds like, yeah, awesome. But like, and and you said it it felt light, right? But what did it? Maybe maybe it, I, I don't know. Did it feel light afterwards, or what was the process like? I, I can only imagine. You know, for me, being like, I'm going to pack everything up. I'm like, whoa. There's a lot to organize. There's yeah. a lot of emotions involved in that. Like, what was that that process like? Going from I'm not happy here to light. It's it's been extremely scary. It's been all the scenarios that you could think that it would be. Um, and a lot of people have come to me and, and during this whole uh, journey and they've they've all been like, oh, I wish I could just pack my things and, and leave and, and I want to do it. And how, how did you do it? Because whenever I pack that bag and I get to the door, it's like I can't take that next step to actually do it. And that's why I say for me, it was just very clear that it was like a purpose. It was a purpose uh, feeling in my body. Yeah. Um yeah, I don't know how, like, and the lightness when when I started making less money, like a lot of things just got actually got easier. Um, and then when I started making money again, which which only just happened like a year ago, I actually started like I get, I, I got up to zero again on my account. <laughs> um, and that was a big day for me. Like zero was like, holy shit, I'm like, I'm a millionaire now. Um like for me, when that happened, when you actually start making money again, it becomes this like, it becomes kind of hard because then it's like, holy shit, more wants more. And now you have money and now you're, you're, you're starting to make these, this money and then you have to make more because then you naturally just like get into the flow of buying things because you have that money. And so it's always like, I really, really, what these six years have taught me is really to downsize everything. And, and I think it's just set me on a... It's set. It's it's set me on a on a journey to 
like stop, like really stop. Like I'm not going to wait like 15 years again to stop and think, what am I doing here? Mm-hmm. I'm going to check with myself like weekly, man. <laughs> um, so, well, the whole like people being scared of change and all that, it's, um, they shouldn't be because the change is going to happen either way. It's just, it's just a matter of what change that gonna, that's going to be, you know? Mm-hmm. And speaking of changing, I mean, you went from having your own apartment, selling it, now you're uh, couch surfing. And uh, from, from what I understand, even spending a night in a mall? Dude, I've, that, that's, yeah, that's one example. Um, I guess that's the easiest example to use because that's like, okay, I get it. <laughs> the guy is like doing it. Um, I actually slept in, in a mall in uh, California in like, like five, for five days, five nights in a in a row, um, and I slept on the floor. Um, there wasn't there wasn't a bed, there wasn't anything, and I uh, and I took like I remember rolling out like I found two carpets in the corner and I rolled them out on top of each other. So like I had a a bed the size of this, <laughs> um, and I just slept on my back for like five days straight. And I think for me, it's been about breaking myself down to the to the very ground metaphorically speaking but even more so physically speaking i think um because w- when you do that you're you're left with the beginning of you mm. and and i think that's been a really really cool process for me to have control over that and speaking about control in these days like you have no control right now and if there's one thing that whole process has taught me it's it's you don't have control or you should you shouldn't have this like demand to to have to be in control um yeah it was just an illusion yeah yeah for sure yeah so the whole couch hopping thing i mean did that i i, I think there's a there's a couch hopping website but like you, you you spoke about your network so how did how did you be able to to travel and and do all this couch surfing. How did that? that yeah, it's off, so it's so off. it's so it's so funny because that website you're mentioning, I actually never heard of it and I've never used it. It's like so funny. I sh- I should have. Now I think of it. I was like, how am I? How am I? <laughs> like you you didn't even use the website. So how? Okay, so this this is totally like, yeah, completely like full on. Okay. I, th- I think I think I'm a f- I think I'm a free I think actually I'm a freelancer couch surfer. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. So the system finds the 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 couches to 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 sleep on and to surf on. Um um. So so back in 2014 when I sold my apartment, I um I had like recently been a couple of times to LA, uh, traveled to LA and, and started writing over there. And I just saw the scene of the music and how that actually could affect my career and my, uh, my ladder climbing into the industry. Um, and, and so I had this very clear idea of, of going to LA and, and being in LA as much as possible. Um, so I traveled to LA without a ticket back. And, and I remember taking a walk on Melrose Avenue the first day of arriving. Um, and I didn't have anywhere to sleep. Um, and I, uh, and I just saw this, uh, store that looked a little bit Scandinavian, like with Scandinavian designs and stuff and, and clothes. And, um, and I asked them, Hey, is the owner, um, Danish by any chance? And the owner was Danish and we started talking and I told him my story a little bit. And after like 30 minutes of chit chat and he was like, Hey, you should just come in and crash on my couch. And, um, and then I stayed with him like for a week. And then I just, I started working in different sessions with different producers and people. And then from there on, I just started, like, I slept in the studios that I worked in and, and then you just meet people, you know, and, and they say, hey, there's this person over here. She's, you can crash there. And, and that's basically how it's been working. And it's been extremely good for my, like I keep saying, my network. The, it's, it's, it's been like a, a real push for, for my network because it's just grown bigger and bigger. Even because when you actually stay at people's private houses you actually get to know them for real. You don't like it's even with your own friends because I've been using my friends a lot too and my family and you know uh, through through this. And and so like crazy to me that when you meet up with friends at cafes or whatever and have a cup of coffee or something, 
you have that one hour or two hours to get catched up or caught up and and uh, but when you actually like stay with them after like 10 p.m. and the the makeup comes off or whatever it is it's like wow this is the real you you know and then that way you actually just make these bonds with these people that are that really feels like family because you've been with them in the hard times or whatever you've 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 been you've been with them after dark so to speak <laughs> yeah um so yeah so that's just been a, a huge blessing wow <laughs> so now with with that we we're able to travel and, and couch surf and all these things and now we're in quarantine and self isolation yeah. and social distancing so couch surfing may not be a possibility anymore so how have you found a solution to that yeah dude i was i was supposed to be first of all i was supposed to be in los angeles um I was actually, I had a sold out show at the Danish Royal Playhouse in Copenhagen, March uh, 15th. And uh, I was supposed to travel to LA three days after that. But then a week before the show, all of this happened and my show got canceled or it got moved to the fall. Um, and I called my girlfriend who, sadly enough, lives in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. um, and we were just on the phone. We were like, hey, should I try to catch a flight before they shut down borders or whatever? Like, and I was like this close to just like fly out and just like try to get in before Trump <laughs> did his thing. Um, but I reasonably enough, I, uh, I decided to just stay put because I, I felt like something's going on. And, um, and I stayed home and, um, and, uh, and then I was so lucky. And that's another thing. I am the luckiest son of a bee in the world, I think. Um, and sometimes I actually feel really guilty for it. Like I, like I'm, I uh, currently am, am situated in, a, in an apartment in Copenhagen. Uh, a few friends had a, an empty apartment uh, due to, they, they were normally uh, renting it out to Airbnb. And, um, and they were like, hey, Tim, you can just use this place. So I've actually been here for like two or three weeks now. And it's just, it just, that's another thing with, with once you, learn to let go of the control. I mean, if I know that it's like, not everybody is like super fortunate and super lucky, but there's still something to it. If you just like lean back, like there's a big chance that something's gonna just fall into your lap. And it's seriously, it's been like that for me though, like every single time. And, um, and yeah, so right now I'm situated here. I think I gotta go home to my parents tomorrow because this place is not gonna be uh, forever. Um, and yeah, but I have a, I don't know, like my dad's like kind of not the best, uh, but he says he's out of the risk uh, for, for anything. So, so I think I'm gonna go home to them and then take it from there. Amazing. I mean, that's truly an inspirational story right there of just, you know, trying to find a, a place to stay safe and then having the luck of your network, like you said, and being able to say, hey, can I crash here? Or can I go visit my parents? It's awesome. That's great. Yeah, and that's, and that's another thing too. Don't be afraid to, to ask. Like, mm -hmm. like it's, there's, there's, I feel like there's a lot of shame or like there's like so, a, a certain degree of shame in asking for help. Um, and I think for me, when I get, when I, when I get guilty or feel, feel guilt for being so fortunate and lucky, it's just very important to like find a way to give that back. And if you do that, then take whatever you can, man, <laughs> just take it, get it. <laughs> I think I think it's the thing of of the the fear of asking. You know, I think if you yeah. if you I mean if you don't ask, you already know the answer is going to be no because you haven't even yeah. asked. So if you ask, it's a fifty fifty chance it's going to be no or yes. But if you don't yeah. ask at all, it's one hundred percent no. For sure, for sure. So um, with you being in the apartment and then you know in a couple of days or next week with with your parents, how have you been keeping yourself busy in quarantine? How have you been using your time wisely? Yeah, well, first of all, I've, it's like, this is the first time where I've actually like really seen like actual mood swings for, for myself. It's been a crazy time. And I think for the first three, four days when the whole news really hit, um, my body and mind was just in shock, Yeah, you know, and that, and that's okay too. And, um, and, and I also want to say like, I think it's very important that people, um, tell themselves that it's okay to feel sorry for yourself. It's okay to, to be sad for yourself in your particular situation. Even if it's not like a huge, like we can always, there's always some, you can always find somebody who's, 
who's dealing with bigger problems than you are. But that doesn't mean that your problem is not like dignified or okay. And because um, I mean, at the end of the day, you got to help yourself before you can help anybody else. Um, so I think for me, it's just it was like those four days of shock effect, and uh, and then I st- sort of started realizing, hey, okay, I gotta use this. I gotta use this for something. And uh, and then it's just a matter of figuring out like how are you gonna the the world changed. So now you gotta change. <laughs> I don't know your world. And for me, I just, um, I started doing like creative things. Like I did uh, five online co-writes with uh, different um, um, writers from, from around the world. And we did uh, online co-writes on Instagram live to give people like a sneak peek behind the process of writing a song. And that's another thing, like you don't normally have time to do that, but now we do have time. We have time to let people in a little bit more into our private lives. And I think that's beautiful. And I think we, I actually, I love the whole, the whole uh, world becoming a bit more open and a bit more, I mean, I know we're a lot, a lot of people are online and live streams all the time, but I actually think it's a good thing. Um, I did, I did have a dream last night though, where I was being watched for the whole night through just like Big Brother or some shit. Yeah, that was kind of weird, but um but yeah, I think it's, uh, it's, there's some good things in this and I've been just writing and I've actually also for the first time sat my ass down and started learning uh, how to produce my own demos. So, um, so I actually did a demo of that song that I wrote with your followers and uh, BMW's uh, fan base uh, and I recorded that myself. So I'm, that's why I'm sitting here with this microphone and stuff. So I'm just getting into things that I d- normally don't get into and the beard, the beard. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only control I have, man. It's the beard. Exactly. Just letting it grow. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know about you guys watching at home, but I think this is the perfect time to listen into the song that Tim created for us based off of our, our Facebook comments and, and, uh, and questions. So the feedback from our viewers and fans, uh, Tim has pulled together some ideas and created a song just for us. Uh, sort of like a, I don't know, a world premiere of writing a song based on audience participation. <laughs> Indeed, a world premiere. Yeah, we set up, I actually sat on uh, on Facebook Live and wrote this um, and obviously got a lot of the input uh, from from the from the fan base of BMW. And it was funny, like there was <laughs> there was one one comment uh, that I really enjoyed. It was uh, when you guys asked, hey, what do you guys want to write a song about? And people were putting their comments and input. There was one guy who was like, um, real men don't have long hair uh, and, a, and a man bun. I really, really enjoyed that one. I was like this close to, write, to writing a song about, about that. But, um, <laughs> but most of it actually was uh, people just wanted to like talk about driving and they wanted to like, very, it's a very loyal fan base you guys got yourselves. Um, they're in love with your brand and with the with the driving lifestyle, and um, so I tried to write a song about driving and about leaving your baggage behind or whatever it is, um, and just drive into space and open your mind and something like that. So it's uh, the song is called "Drive with You." I'm just gonna take this guy out for uh, the performance, but I hope you like it. <laughs> All right, let's see. I want to drive with you. Ah, fuck, that was wrong, see? That's okay, because this is online. It's okay. Breathe. I want to drive to the moon. Drive through space with you. Hit out the window. Wish upon a star like lovers do. When I look in the mirror, here's what I see. The baggage I packed just filling up on me. Is it getting any clearer? Just wanna be free. Guess that's the part of me that just wanna drive with you. Forget all the pain, wait for me to rain on a joy ride with you. On a highway to love, never gonna get off. 
You make me want to feel alive. Give myself another try. Wish we could always travel and never arrive. I want to drive with you. Just want to ride with you. We can go up and up. We won't ever stop On our way to freedom This road waits for no one No one When I look in the mirror Here's what I see The baggage I packed Just filling up on me Is it getting any clearer? Just wanna be free I guess that's the part of me that just want to drive with you. Forget all the pain, wait for me to rain on a joy ride with you. On a highway to love, never gonna get off. You make me want to feel alive, give myself another try. Wish we could always travel and never arrive. I want to drive with you. Just want to ride with you. <laughs> that was awesome. Well done. That's the that's the one man clap you always fear as an audience uh, as an artist. <laughs> yeah, right. Slow, awesome clap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think all the all the uh, people tuning in live and listening into this are clapping right along with me. Thank you. <laughs> I hear it. I hear it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Wow. Like, th let's just like take a moment to breathe because that that was like you're just pouring your heart out there. Like it was a challenge, man. <laughs> it was a challenge. <laughs> I mean, Tim pulled together like all these different inspirational sources and uh, and created this song just for us. Like this is this is just absolutely amazing. And and I think the you know the question before, what's keeping you busy? You know, using the things that are that are all around us, using exactly. the internet, using the ways that we can we can communicate wherever we are in the world and helping yeah. helping each other um, along. Whatever, wherever we need need help, and however we need we need help. I think uh, the so, somebody said to me yesterday, you know, like uh, yeah, this is great to stay home and everything. Like it's the dream, right? Like you just want to yeah. stay home, but like you're not allowed to leave, right? You're not allowed to go go too it's far. The and free run. will, the it's free, the free will, man. That's what it is, you know. And yeah. that that's of you singing about driving, you know, endlessly. It's just like ah. Oh, the wind in your hair, like, oh, oh, yeah, I remember that <laughs> feeling, you know, so yeah, thank you for, for sure. sharing, sharing those, uh, those wonderful memories with, uh, oh, with everybody. Thank you to the, for the, to the fan base for, uh, for giving me, me that inspiration. Um, I actually, I think I've under, undermined uh, the, the potential of this song. I actually, now that I played it now, I mean, it was born l yesterday and so it's very new and fresh, fresh, but it definitely has something and that's uh it's going to be interesting to see where this song is going to go after this. Yeah, cool. Well, we heard it first, right? World premiere yeah. here. Yep. We're taking over the, the radio waves uh, when we get out of quarantine. Um, sure. So, <laughs> speaking about when we get out of quarantine. Um, when, this yep. song, oh, when. <laughs> when. Whenever. Um, what are your plans? I mean, is there something, do you have something to look forward to in the future? I mean, you were saying that your, your gig um, at the, the Danish... Theater, yeah, the Danish uh, Danish uh, Royal Playhouse. Royal Play uh, so that's been been postponed until the fall. So so yeah. what, are you, what are your plans for the future after this is all See, over? That's the thing. Right now we're waiting in Denmark here to uh, hear the next um, excuse me the next um, the next word from the government, and uh, I'm I'm waiting to hear what the restrictions of gatherings and events are going to be. If they're going to say like, hey, it's okay to be a hundred people. Uh, Right now, we have until May 10, where we're not allowed to be more than 10 people, um, which, like, we don't even do that. Like, I'm, I'm staying super quarantined myself, um, not taking any chances. Um, and so for me right now, it's super hard to make plans. And that's, again, the, the, the free will. Like, for me, this is not – I actually – in in full um, disclosure here, <laughs> with with all these people watching, full disclosure, I uh, I called my parents last Monday. 
I didn't expect this to happen, but I sat and weeped for 20 minutes with my parents. Like, it was weird, man. It was, I didn't, I didn't know I was that sad. And that's again, like, like a wake up call to people to be like, hey, did you actually like stop and feel how you're feeling? Um, just check yourselves because you, you, you may not be aware of it, but there might be a river coming, you know, there might be a, a whole crying river just like ready to go inside your bodies. And that's, that happened for me on Monday. Um, and, uh, and for me, the reason I started crying, I think was just, it became this big thing. Like I can't control anything anymore. I can't, I can't, uh, plan my summer. I can't plan the the things I can't plan my momentum for keep, for keeping, keep going. And I can't, you know, all these things I can't, and I can't, and I can't. Um, but now I realized, okay, but here's what I, here's what I can. Like I said before, shortly, I can grow my beard. I'm, I'm actually, I mean, it sounds funny, but it's not even a joke. <laughs> Just like doing something that you actually 100% control physically on your body is amazing. And it gives you a sort of like, Hey, I can grow my beard if I want. That's, that's my call. Um, Corona can't blow that off, you know, like, um, so, so that's, uh, definitely an advice I would give people and my plans, um, right now, first of all, I'm going to wait to see what the restriction is going to be. And then I think I'm just going to get creative with like, let's say the restriction is going to be, you can't do any concerts with more than 10 people. Then maybe I do like these like shows where I'm just playing in front of like one person at a time or something like that, you know, like, the, the inner child in me is having a party right now. The inner child is just like, whoa, we can like check out things that we didn't, you know, think about before. Like we can do like new things. We can go on an adventure like inside of ourselves or we can do new things that we don't normally get to do. Um, where the adult version of me, the, the guy who's like thinking about career and thinking about all the other things, he's like kind of afraid, but I'm listening more to my inner child right now, I think. Yeah. I think I th it's it's that thing that, that you said of just letting yourself feel what you gotta feel. And if you gotta be sad, if you're gonna feel shocked, if you wanna feel mad or whatever, feel what you gotta feel. Don't repress it because it's just gonna yeah. block you. And it's that it's that that delicate balance between the adult and the inner child and trying to figure out what to do, how to take it day by day, and how to create your own world in the world that, that we're currently living in. And yeah. And it is, it's, it's more now than ever, like, here's your opportunity. So yeah. take it, you know, exactly. What a great message to, to everybody listening in, you know, uh, you, you leaning into the vulnerability. Thank you so much. And sharing with you, sharing with us, your full disclosure of just having that moment with your, with your parents and mm -hmm. the shock, but also having your inner child go, okay, what can I create next? You know, and how yeah. can we as individuals tap into that as well? For sure. For sure. Yeah. Definitely. So. We said at the beginning of the of the uh, of the live stream at the beginning of this this whole shebang that we are open to uh, hearing your questions and we have a ton of questions so I think it's a good time to dive into the Q and A right now. Um, let me have a quick look. Um, we have received wonderful feedback feedback uh, in the users comment from people who got inspired from your story and of course absolutely loved your song so thank you for that. Um, oh, cool. We also got some great feedback on your T-shirt, and people are wanting to know where you got it. <laughs> I um, I um, I kind of um, I kind of made it myself. I mean, not the. It was uh, it was a full T-shirt, um, and then I just started like I, I cut off the sleeves and then I painted on it. My dad's a uh, painting artist, so there's a part of me that just want to feel connected with him when I'm away, which I am a lot. Um, so this is a way for me to like connect with, with my dad. Um, so yeah, I actually, I think, I think this was just like one of those, um, uh, merchandise shops or whatever, where you can like get like prints on your, and I just ordered, a, ordered, a, a smiling face print on, on a t-shirt and then I modified it. <laughs> Fantastic. It's awesome. <laughs> Um, so Glitter Patrick says, how long did it take you to write that song that you performed for us? us? Yeah, um, well, let's see. Started yesterday, so <laughs> um, <laughs> it was like probably, so it was from, it was like late in the, in the night too. So it was probably like a couple of hours maybe, I think. Yeah. Wow. Uh, my mind is just is just blown. That's that's amazing. Um, 
And for any of the songwriters out there, the, the musicians out there, Sonny Cairo uh, says, any tips for new songwriters? Any tips for new songwriters? Yeah. Um, I think the very best thing you can do. Okay. So the process for me of writing songs is I, uh, I keep a lot of notes in my, uh, in my notes on my phone. And, um, every time I think of something, it's, it's almost just like keeping a diary, just like write it down and don't, don't feel ashamed or don't, don't stop. The, the most important rule is don't stop writing. Whether or not you're just what writing poop, 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 just keep writing it because something's going to pop out, <laughs> um, so to speak. I don't even know where that came from, but that just came. Um, and, uh, and then I like having like these like, I like having like final sort of poems in a, in a, in a, in a song before I start writing the melody. So, and then I read the, the lyric I have and see if it actually um, sticks just by reading it. And if it sounds good and if it, it if it can be told instead of being sung. Uh, and then I like to put music to it and melodies and stuff like that. So maybe there's some inspiration in, in that, but most importantly, just keep writing page down and page up. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, get a couple of questions coming in about, um, travel. So Julian Sportfreund says, what do you take with you when you travel? And this is actually something that I wanted to ask you too, because if you're <laughs> couch hopping, if you're on the go, I don't think, yeah. I don't think you can take that much with you. So what do you actually take with you when you're, when you're on the road road? Yeah, I've, um, that's, and that's another way of feeling free. That's another tip to, to how, how do I make myself feel free? It's getting rid of as much shit as possible. Um, I'm traveling with my, with my back, with my one sort of backpacker bag. It, it's almost like a military bag. It, it like, you can have, like, there's a, a bunch of zippers and it's, it's very, it's, it's a very cool bag where you can have different compartments for different things. Um, and then sometimes I, so I actually planted guitars in different parts of the world um, so that, yeah, <laughs> I'm, dude, I'm like a secret agent of, of some shit. I don't know. <laughs> planted guitar. Talk to me about this. What? Well, so, so because I was traveling so much, I, uh, it, it, it sort of got, got hard to travel with the guitar on the plane all the time. Uh, so, so I started picking different people in different countries and either buying a guitar there or leaving my guitar and say, Hey, can, would you, would you like to take care of my little baby until I get back and see you one day? So like, I have different friends around the world. Who's like, who's the keeper, <laughs> the keepers of my guitar, like a guitar. And it's such a, an emotional, cool connection for me too. This guy has my guitar and he's had it for like two or three years. And, and then like, you know, it might be a year before I see this guy again, but when I go see him, not only am I going to go have a great time with this guy, but he also has my guitar. How cool is that? You know? Uh, so just planting like little emotional guitar packages all around the planet. <laughs> That's amazing. Like yeah, being a keeper of Tim Shoe's guitar, like all over the world. It's sort of, it's sort of like a, um, it sounds like a really cool, like spy movie, but like with like music and creativity. That's so yeah. awesome. You just made me realize, realize how wacky I actually am. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome in the best possible way. Mm -hmm. uh, so Magnus Ericsson says, what advice do you have for people also looking to constantly travel? do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think, I think, um, what advice do I got for people who also wants to constantly travel? Well, okay. Well, I, is this going to get weird if I take my shirt off? Probably is, huh? I don't know. Come on, come on, let's do it. So here's, here's, a, here's, um, uh, just cause I can't find any, any else. So here's what you do. Okay. So when, when you try to pack your, um, when you try to pack your your bag, you're just gonna fold all your clothes like like this, and then, oh shit, then you put it like that. Ah oh, shit, you can't see that, can you? You see this? Yeah. This is like a really poor version of it, but you roll it in like into tiny little, beautiful little china rolls, 
like as tight as you possibly can. And this way, you can fit like the double clothes in your bag. And uh, the trick is to travel with as many boxer shorts as possible, as many boxer shorts and and uh, and socks, and just have only have one pair of uh, trousers or pants, and those are the ones that you're actually wearing. Um, so that's one tip if you want to travel lightly. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So Marie Kondo, step aside. We've got the new uh, <laughs> the new clothing organizer. Uh, Tim Shu with us right now. Uh, Marie Kondo. I mean, she's she's done with you. You're you're the new uh, closet organizer. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> that's so cool. I never knew that actually, and I will most definitely be using that tip next time I travel. Um, Amazing. All right, uh, we've got three three more questions. Um, what would Josie Porter? What was the craziest place you've ever slept? I slept like in a, in a sort of, well, I mean, obviously the mall was kind of crazy because I had to hide from the, the guards as well, the, the shopping, the shopping guards or whatever you call them. Um, so every night when they came to close down the shopping mall, I would literally stand behind a wall it's like this and I'd just be like, I hope this guy doesn't catch me. And then they closed down the whole thing and I just roamed around in the mall like using the public restrooms and all that stuff. I got up in the morning super early to be able to shower in the actual sink. Um, and this was not like a hundred percent illegal because I had a friend who had one of the stores or like a, a kind of studio set up in the actual mall. So he was like, Tim, I mean, if you don't have any place to crash, I mean, you're, I mean, you could crash in the, in here if you want to i mean it's not a hundred percent legit and you sort of have to hide from the from the from the guards and the and the people um but i don't think it's a huge deal if it if you get caught i mean you can try it's up to you if you want and i was like fuck yeah let's do this this sounds like so cool like a, it sounds like a movie um so that was the, probably the, the most fun place I've, I've actually um been living for like a little week and, I've, and then i've then i I slept in a, like a, what do you call that? A bunker? A bunker? A bunker. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, it was like, it was actually in California too. It was, it was like this weird fucking place with, it, it felt like I was in Baghdad or something. It was really weird. But yeah, it, on a, on a wooden bed and I had to like climb in the window to get into the bed. And it was like the size of, well, the screen. <laughs> um, so I've just, and I've slept in a, in a sort of like a closet or like, yeah, man, it's, dude, it's weird. Wow. Wow. Weird. So, uh, wow. Um, <laughs> Exploradora says, after Corona, would you like to continue with digital partnerships and digital concerts on social media? Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, I think, I think, that's another blessing that that we uh, that we got through this is is that we've all like somehow learned to be a bit more cooperative, um, and I think I think we're gonna I think a lot of people not only talking music and and music business or corporations um, between different uh, brands or whatever I I think a lot of people actually might like find new ways of for like making money and new ways of, of doing things from home or doing alternative ways to what they did before. Maybe some, some people weren't happy before this whole situation with their jobs or whatever. And maybe this has forced them to actually, I think we're going to see like a, some sort of development into, uh, into something new. Um, and for me, I'm definitely going to keep doing it. And I've, I've done a, a live show, live uh, online concert every Sunday on the platform called Stage It. Um, and then, yeah, so I've been doing that for five weeks straight now. Amazing. It's, it's the most definitely true. I mean, even with, with our, our live stream today, you know, you're in Denmark, I'm in Germany, people watching in, listening in all over the world, you know. That's the thing, the one constant that's connecting us. And uh, it's giving us that life force. Okay, we might not be able to meet uh, face to face, yeah. but we can at least meet uh, virtually in that 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 ticks that box in us of feeling that human connection. 
For sure. And, and I've, I've always, always loved people, but I actually thought that this whole lockdown would give me like a sort of like, oh, I'm just myself now. I can just write songs for me and I don't have to deal with anybody. But the thing is, like, I really realized, holy shit, I'm writing music to connect with people. Like, because once that whole thing was just taken away from me and I couldn't go out and actually perform my songs in front of people, it was like, what's the what's the meaning of it all then? Like, so that's one thing that I really realized. Yeah, that's amazing. All right. Last question, and I think this is a great one to end on, from I Am Sassy. Thank well, you. Yep, I am me sassy. too, me too, man. There me we too. Go. Um, uh, thank you, I Am Sassy, for this question. Um, I Am Sassy asks, what have you been most grateful for for doing the quarantine? Uh, uh, sorry, what have you been most grateful for uh, during the quarantine or the lockdown? Um... The fact that I could sort of go through these emotions and go through like a sort of a breakdown, I think, and then find the resilience to stand up again and be like, I'm, I'm just going to do it differently now. Um, I think that th that discovery is just every time you make, because I've, I've made that discovery before in my life, but this is, this feels different. And every time you discover that in yourself, you're just going to like cook up more resilience to, so, I mean, <laughs> what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> yeah. I think that's just, you know, yeah. yeah awesome. Ah, oh, Tim, thank you so much for joining us today. You really have inspired me and I hope the viewers at home uh, to create the freedom to follow our dreams and to make our lives match what our hearts truly want. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time out of your lifelong journey to stop and chat with us today. Hey, it's not like I got anything else to do, man. <laughs> Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Well, that wraps up this episode of Creators of a Different Beat. Thank you so much for tuning in and making this as interactive as possible with your questions. Now, if you want to relive this conversation again, then make sure to tune in to the Changing Lanes podcast, which is the official podcast of BMW, which is available on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you like to listen to podcasts. This interview will also be available on the Changing Lanes podcast, so look out for it, and, there, and you can subscribe. And also listen to Tim's awesome song. Remember, you heard it first here, world premiere. And uh, to that, we are very, very grateful. Thank you so much, Tim, for spending time with us today. Thanks for having me. Have a great Thanks. day, guys. I'm Jonathan, and this has been Creators of a Different Beat, presented by Changing Lanes, the official podcast of BMW. Take care, guys, and see you next time. Bye.